Good evening, Dr. Zakir. My name is Roberto. I'm doing BDS in Chennai Savita Dental College. As Dr. Zakir said, God is a unique creator. There is only one. Second thing, you said God created human by, out of love. Third, God has created wealth, poor, healthy, and weakness is all because of a test. Similarly, in Christian, they believe God is one. Second point, God created human out of love. Third point, it's the same thing. All this thing is because of a test by the God. So I just want to have an answer from you. Don't mistake, I'm not a Christian. <clears throat> the brother asked a question that even in Christianity, like Islam, <clears throat> God is one and God loves the creation and he further said, then what is the difference? You want to know the difference between Islam and Christianity or? It's not the difference. What is the most convinced thing you think that you say that other than Islam, any other type of worship is non-acceptable? That's a very good question, the brother. Now the question has come to forth that first there was just a blank statements. If it is a question mark, it's a question. If it is a statement, we have to try and find the question. What is the difference between Islamic form of worship as compared to other form of worship? What is so unique? And Christianity also says God is one. Christianity says that uh, God also loves. Islam says God is one. Islam says God is. God also loves the creation. Islam says worship. Christianity says worship. What is the difference between the worship of Islam and Christianity? Or what is the uniqueness about Islam as compared to other religions? Mainly talking about Christianity. Brother, on the face of it, if you read the Quran correctly and the interpretation I gave in my talk, and if you read the Bible correctly with the correct interpretation, we believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was, we believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was one of the mightiest messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention. We believe that he was the Messiah, translated Christ. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. But there are parting of faith. There are many Christians who say that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he claimed divinity. Now the difference between what the Bible says and the difference between what the Christians assume and what they practice. The difference between that. So many Christians say that Jesus Christ peace be upon him, he claimed divinity. So when they say God is one, they say Jesus Christ peace be upon him is God. Which we Muslims take objection to. There is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ peace be upon him himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. So the form of worship for the normal Christian is worshipping Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And I repeat my statement. There is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. If any Christian can show me any unequivocal statement in the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says I am God or where he says worship me, I, Dr. Zakir Naik, am, I am ready to accept Christianity today. I am ready to put my head on the guillotine. I don't speak on behalf of my other Muslim brothers because if you read the Bible, it is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said that my father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29, my father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28, I with the Spirit of God, cast out devil. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20. I, with the finger of God, cast out devil. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. For I seek not my will, but the will of my Father. Anyone who says, I seek not my will, but the will of Almighty God, is a Muslim. Therefore, I said in my talk, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a Muslim. Quran says that in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 52. Furthermore, if you read, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 24, this is life eternal, so that you may know Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. It's further mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 17, verse number 3, the words you hear are not mine, but my Father's who has sent me. 
It's clearly mentioned in the book of Acts chapter number 2, verse number 22. Ye men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles which God did by him and you are witness to it. A man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles which God did by him and you are witness to it. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was one of the mightiest messengers of God, but he never claimed divinity. He never said you should worship me. But unfortunately, the Christian church today, they teach that salvation. See, Bible also talks about heaven, talks about hell, but the purpose of existence is not mentioned in detail. It's not mentioned at all except what Paul has mentioned. Paul mentioned the Corinthians, chapter number 15. He says, in the first Corinthians, chapter number 15, that if Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, died not for your sins, your faith is in vain, and everything is in vain. That means, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he died for your sins, according to Paul. And they quote the verse of the Bible, Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verse number 16, that for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believeth in him, shall not die, but have everlasting life. So the concept of salvation, according to the church, is that you believe Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, died for your sin, and you shall go to Jannah, you shall go to paradise. Which is not mentioned because the word begotten, from Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verse number 16, has been thrown out by Thaidu scholars of the highest eminence from the RSV, Revised Standard Version of the Bible, as a concoction, as a fabrication, as an interpolation. So what they're following is more of Pauline Christianity. But Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, when a person approaches him, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 19, verse number 16 and 17, that, good master, what good things shall I do so that I shall gain eternal life? What good thing shall I do so that I shall go to Jannah, paradise? So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, replies, Why thou callest me good? There is none good except one, that is Almighty God. And if thou want to enter eternal life, you follow the commandments. He didn't say that if you want to go to Jannah, want to go to paradise, you believe that I died for your sins. He never said that. He said, follow the commandments. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, It's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 to 21. That think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I have come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Unless the heaven and the earth pass away, not one jot or tittle shall be passed away from the law until all be fulfilled. And whosoever shall keep the commandments and teach men to do so shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall break one of the least commandments will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the skies and the Pharisees, in no way shall you enter into paradise. Because if you want to be a good Christian, you have to follow all the commandments. There is only one God, you should not do idol worship, all what Moses, peace be upon him, said. So here we analyze, if we do a research of the biblical scriptures, it is actually believing in one God, not Trinity. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 171, Wala taqulu salasa, don't say Trinity. In khairul lakum, this has stopped, it's better for you. So if you say God is three in one, it is shirk. You won't get salvation. So if you really, there's no statement at all about Trinity. The word Trinity does not exist anywhere in the Bible. But it's there in the Quran. Besides Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 171, it's also there in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 73. It says, Laqad kafra kalu. In Allah, salisu salasa. They are doing kuf, they are blaspheming those who say that God is three in one. The word Trinity doesn't exist anywhere in the Bible. The closest statement is the first epistle of John, chapter number five, verse number seven, which says, For there are three that bear a call in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And this verse of the Bible, by Thaidu scholars of the highest eminent Christian scholars, in the Revised Standard Version of the Bible, they've thrown this verse out of the Bible as an interpolation, as a fabrication, as a concoction. So the verse which comes closest to the Trinity, doesn't mention Trinity, but comes closest, is thrown out by the scholars of Christianity as a fabrication. So if we analyze, if you want to check what is right in the Bible, here is the Furqan. This is the criteria. It will tell you what is right, what is wrong. And if you compare with this, and even today if you read the Bible, the Bible never claims that Jesus is God, peace be upon him. It says you should worship only one God. And when Jesus Christ, peace be upon us, asked that which is the first of the commandment, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 12, verse number 29, it says, Shema Israelo Adnai Hainu Adnai Khad. It's a Hebrew quotation which means, Your O Israel, the Lord, our God is one Lord. So the problem is that if you read the Bible, the exact purpose of creation is not mentioned. It is vague. The Christian church has taken up a teaching of Paul, St. Paul, and say that you believe Jesus Christ, peace be died for your sin, and you will go to heaven. Then you do anything, you rob, you rape, you do anything. If he's paid for a sin, if Jesus Christ, peace be upon paid for a sin, I can do anything. 
For example, someone tells me to a restaurant, go to the restaurant, eat what you want, I've paid your bill, I can eat anything. Chicken, mutton, biryani, anything I can eat. So if Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, has died for my sin, then you can commit any sin and you go to heaven. Only have to believe that he died for your sin. So this is the concept of the church, which is not what, what the Bible mentions. And you can refer to my video cassette, similarities between Islam and Christianity, which gives the similarities. That's the reason I say that Jesus Christ taught nothing but Islam that is submitting a will to Almighty God.